welcome to episode two of The Way of Wonder. So thrilled that you're joining me, Bill Donahue from the Theology of the Body Institute for this meandering through the glories of the world that we live in, things we see, smell, taste, touch here. We're talking about all things good and beautiful, and I'm here with my awesome cohort and colleague, my companion on the journey, Father Patrick Schultz, who's going to lead us into the way of wonder today after we remind our viewers in this second episode what we're doing uh, in this way of wonder podcast. This is a kind of school of beauty. This is how we open ourselves, our senses to God who is beauty. And in a kind of Lexio Divina format, we read the beauty that comes from human hands or from the divine artist himself in the created world. We have a format of Lexio reading something. So one of us will present an artist, whatever the work might be. Uh, we will give some details about it. We'll do some meditatio about the artist and the work they created. Then we'll step back and just drink. And that's the contemplatio, the contemplation of this work, whatever it might be. And finally, as we kind of ruminate in it and marinate in the beauty, letting it wash over us and spark all sorts of reactions in us, we talk about actio. How is this beauty in this episode this week going to change the way I look, the way I hear, the way I experience my walk in the world as a human being today? So the actio is the end. All right, that being said, I just want to welcome back Father Patrick Schultz. How are you today, my brother, who is my father? <laughs> Bill, I'm good, man. It's good to be with you. It's... uh. It's it's always busy in the vineyard, but man, it's so nice to be able to pause and just be with you and uh, just to chat. It's so good. So yes, yeah, yes. I'm this grateful for this technology, man. We were having some some issues at beforehand, but it's it's working now. So I know we were. Uh, I was just going to say that this is the glorious season. We're starting this Way of Wonder podcast in both of our favorite seasons, the autumn. Oh yeah, the fall. So yeah. how's it, how's it going it's over awesome. there in, in Wadsworth, Ohio? How are things going right now? It just like just within the last week, like the the switch was flipped, and it's it's we are full blown in autumn mode for sure. It is uh, the air is air is crisp. You got you got the the leaves are starting to die, so you get the colors is just starting to pop. We got those burning bush uh, oh, shrubs yeah. around our property, so like the red is just starting to overtake the green, hmm. and uh, that's just great. It's sweater weather, you know. So it's so <laughs> wonderful. Yes, it is. <laughs> you know. Yep. It's great. It's great. You got pumpkins on the porch. Yeah, it's. Uh, I love oh, this wow. time of year. I think you're a couple of weeks ahead yeah. of us. We're kind of slowly uh, leaning into it. I was on the back deck the other day. I always do my prayer time in the morning with a good dark roast coffee on the back porch, and we've got mm -hmm. a a Japanese cherry tree, and um, it's still quite green, but a mm -hmm. sugar maple tree nearby drifted over a leaf, and so the first gorgeous reddish orange maple landed on the deck and I just picked it up and I was like, thank you, Jesus, it's coming. <laughs> Best season. <laughs> so Father Patrick, you are going to, yeah. you're going to propose, we, we told our listeners, our viewers rather that we're going to do um, surprises each week. We're going to reveal something that has moved us, something that inspires or moved us in the realm of what is beautiful. So last week I, yeah. I, 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 I uh, zapped you with the Victor Isa heart of God sculpture. Oh man. You were destroyed. Yeah, that was utterly. crazy. I was. So, I'm ready. I'm I'm I, I'm wide open for whatever you got cooking today. So I I want to like you did last time. I want to start with a quote. Uh, I know it's a quote that you've heard, you've seen, you've reflected on. You love this quote, and it's from our 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 boy Archbishop Fulton Sheen. So oh, yeah. Thomas, if you can get that quote up on the screen, maybe for us to take a look at. Fulton Sheen says, "To materialists, this world is opaque like a curtain." Nothing can be seen through it. A mountain is just a mountain. A sunset, just a sunset. But to poets, artists, and saints, the world is transparent like a window pane. It tells of something beyond. It tells of something beyond. All right, well, before I, I bring up any of the images, Bill, what uh, what's stirring in you? Just, I know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. It's insane because you know, I know you know that this is literally one of my favorite quotes of all time. And when we yeah. talk about the way of, of wonder, uh, Bishop Fulton Sheen certainly had those eyes to see. And this quote says it all, right? It's you're either going to have your eyes closed, so to speak. Uh, the materialist just sees stuff, inert matter, nothing transcendent, really. It's just is what it is. But yeah. I, I love how he says poets, artists, saints. There's sort of this yeah. 
in this sort of kind of fraternity, right? They're all cut from the same cloth, poets, artists, saints. The saint is a poet, right? The artist is a poet. They're both called to be saints. I love it. And I love how it, um, I always love this idea of like translucence or, uh, yeah, trans, yeah. You know, like I, I see, and then, and all of a sudden something else behind it pops and I see more. I love this quote. Yeah. Have you ever read, uh, before you pulled the images, just another thought, have you ever read, uh, C.S. Lewis's meditation in a tool shed? I have not. I've heard about it, but I haven't read it. Oh man. It'll, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It, it'll take you like five minutes. It's a tiny little essay, but that's where he makes the distinction of looking at and looking along. Ah. So he, 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 he puts you visually inside of this dark tool shed and there's a beam of light coming in through a crack in the door and standing removed from the beam of light. You can see the beam of light. You can see dust floating in the beam of light. Mm. He says, so that's at the thing. He says, imagine moving your body into the position of the beam of light, and now it's directly on your eye. And now you see the beam of light disappears, and now what you see is the edge of the door frame and the leaves of the tree and millions of miles away, the sun, right, at oh, a distance. Wow. That's the difference between looking at a thing and looking along a thing. And and I this mm -hmm. is what you know, Fulton is obviously getting at with this quote that, right. like, to materials, they just look at a thing, but artists and poets and saints they look along the thing to uh, mm. to the thing beyond right so with that in mind uh i'm pull i'm doing a little curveball actually yeah, it's episode two but i'm pulling a curveball because <laughs> last time you presented a specific work of art uh by a specific artist um sculpture jesus encounter mary magdalene so stunning so beautiful yep but I wanted to change it up. I have, I have three images for us today. Wow. One is an image that I took on my phone, and two are images that you've taken okay, on your cool. phone. Nice. Yeah. So uh, let's pull up this first one, and I, I want to talk about this. So oh, I, oh I think I gosh. sent you this picture. You did send me this. You did about a month ago? <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. an yeah, photograph, yeah, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. This is not a painting. This is a photograph. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a painting. It's not, uh, yeah, it's not one of those, like, computer wallpapers that you buy online or something. Yeah, it is. I was driving to our staff retreat and uh, it was early in the morning I'm driving through the, these back country roads to get to this retreat house. And the way that the sun was coming through those leaves, the way that the beams were hitting my eye, all of a sudden I looked out my driver's side window and I just see this <laughs> and it, pierced me i like i hit the brake so hard i didn't even look if there was any <laughs> cars spilled. around me i just right. yeah just crushed those brakes and i was like i have to stop so i got out of the car to the side of the road and just stood there just so just transfixed by this mm. this scene this mm. just this image of this glimpse what what felt to me was just a glimpse of the shire right yes. um Yes. So it, th this the theme I want us to kind of explore today is not just simply the beauty that's created by artists and poets, mm. but the beauty that's created by the creator himself, right? The author of beauty. Yeah. Um, like the whole point of this this podcast is to invite people to recognize these moments that God gives them. Um, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit pause on me and just allow you to just kind of enter yeah, into this me, with me, Bill. Let me tarry a bit, Father Patrick. Let me tarry. I'm gonna linger in this one because yeah, please. Here's the thing. You just kind of said it. <clears throat> Anybody just popping in, it's like, uh, what do you guys, it kind of does look like a computer wallpaper. Like I, but wait, <laughs> look at this. Look how arresting it is. Why is it so arresting? This commonplace scene that you, you know, people could be driving by on the way home from work today, right? Or tomorrow on the way to work in the morning. What's arresting is how it's framed and how I'm moved by the detail of the foreground. It's almost like a perfect composition, mm -hmm. but you didn't compose this, God did. Mm -mm. You, you've mm -mm. got this detailed, rich, lush foreground, the first thing our eye meets as we walk into it. And then you're kind of invited into a, a dance between dark, rich forest green and then a sort of a vibrant, flaming, is that corn? I think it looks like corn, kind of rising. Yeah. And you you get this depth perception. You're this depth, like you're going deeper in, deeper. And you've got this far off mist in these fields, and then this canopy over it, 
illuminated by the sun. I mean, it's just, a, it's something to rest in. It's like a portal into a Narnia or something. It's, it's like a an entrance into yeah. another world. Just as a human being who is literally invited by God into another world, uh, this this can be one of those kind of like sacramental stepping stones that caused you oh, literally it, it, to hit the brakes, like hit the brakes, pause. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was it was definitely one of those moments. You know, I one of the things that bring, that comes to mind when I when I think back on this moment and this when I look at this image is there was a, a wonderful old priest in our diocese in Cleveland who who died a few years ago. His name was Father Al Krupp. He used to give this great line of advice to young seminarians, young priests, just spiritual directees. He would he would say this. He says it's so important to notice what you notice, <laughs> and. Uh, this is one of the, I mean, right? It's one of those pithy lines. It's just like, yeah, that's really good. But um, I mean, this this is one of those moments where like the Lord was reaching through creation to me, through beauty, um, to draw my attention. Right? Like, yeah. it's as if He had placed this gift, this vista, this view, this scene. Like He had planted this gift in creation as like a sort of time bomb waiting for me to get to set point in space and time. Cause he was like, Oh man, when Patrick gets here, he is going to love this. Like this is going to move. <laughs> I, him, lo- I you know? love how you said that. He's like a, he's like a, he's like a dad. Who's got a little something special for his kids when they come down the steps of the morning in their PJs, man, I'm going to reveal this surprise for them. That's the father. Yeah. That's God. Yeah. I mean, it's a totally like it's actually like there's a story in my when I was in third grade, my dad bought me a metal detector for for Christmas. Mm. And uh, one of the things he did in the fall before Christmas, he went in the backyard and sprayed like pennies and coins all over the backyard. Gosh. Right. So then, you know, snow falls. I get the present Christmas morning. I open it up and I said, go see if there's any treasure in the backyard. And like (laughs) I'm finding coins everywhere. Right. Like that's the father. Like the father Mm. has buried beauty and treasure in creation. Um, and we just, so we just drive past it all the time, you know? Um, I just think that, you know, when we think about, you know, at the end of the day, when St. Ignatius talks about the importance of doing the examination prayer, it's not just simply about examining our conscience to see where we failed. It's about examining our day, reviewing our day to notice the moments where we didn't notice him reaching out to us. Mm. And there's like a million of these little moments Mm -hmm. all throughout the day. So I want to I want to bring you to the next picture, which is sure. similar to this one, and I want you to tell me the story of this picture, Bill. Oh my gosh, that's great! Um, copyright Bill Donahue. I did take this picture. Uh huh. Um, it's yep. so funny because when you showed me yours, your the first image of your being arrested, this was this is the thought that came to mind. So this is probably 2015. No, actually earlier than that. Uh, I think I was still teaching high school at the private boys school. And um, this is out in Malvern, PA. And I used to drive past this uh, nature preserve called Kirkwood. And early October, it was insane. I mean, the spider webs would be like these, you know, jeweled mosaics all over the tall grass. And and I would just, I had to stop each morning. I would try to get up early and get there early before I went to the homeroom for, for school. And I would just kind of meander in these paths uh, at Kirkwood. And I typically, in October anyway, I was late for homeroom quite a bit. And it's the, <laughs> it's the Lord's fault. So this is kind of the main path into Kirkwood. Beyond, see that, that, that line of trees off in the distance, there's a stream, which don't even get me started on that. And if you round up to the right of this path, uh, to the right of the sunrise, it goes up a hill and there's a massive, I think it's an old maple, and I call it the party tree because it's a huge, mm. huge maple. And of course, the party tree is a reference to Mr. Baggins of the Shire. It's where he had his 111st birthday party under the party tree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is this was literally my way of wonder for years. And it was uh, rich and wet and full of deer and hawks and all kinds of bird song. It's a great spot to to be late for work. It's a great spot to be late. Yeah. Well, right. I mean, that presupposes that that in terms of the hierarchy of values, right? Like you have you prioritized drinking and beauty mm-hmm. over being at work on time, you know? <laughs> um, right. 
and like not encouraging everybody like, to be I, late for work, but you know. But at the same time, I don't know. Like maybe we should. I, I don't know what the answer is there, but I just think like mm. imagine if you if if you had had those priorities inverted. Like it's it's more yeah. important for me to constantly be in my homeroom at the exact right time mm. over like it's important to feed my heart with beauty. Yeah. You know, like I'm sure there, there was so many moments that you experienced alone on that path. Oh yeah. Where like there's graces that you're going to take to your grave where the father was pouring into you that just, you can't even put into work. Like the picture, we take these pictures cause we're trying oh. to capture right. these gifts, but you can't ever capture the gift. No. Um, it's a, it's a moment frozen in time, I, but yeah, there's so many more layers to it. You know what? Let, let me linger on that thought of, you know, what, what do you choose? We talked about this, I think, well, we talked about it in the Way of Beauty course, but Martha, Mary, who chose the better part? Yeah. Um, obviously, fulfill your duties, but to your point, I, I knew, especially in the early fall, it, it was just a stunning place to be. So I killed time, right? You got to make time. By ma making time means you have to kill time. You have to say, I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to get up at 530 in the morning. Because as you said, like this fills my heart. And inevitably, every morning when I would spend time with God in this beauty, I was more ready to spill out uh, more energy, more creativity in the classroom. And often I would share it with, with the boys. I would share stories of this, like the divine artist. I mean, I taught sacred scripture and I taught a theology of the body course. So yeah, this filled me up so that it could then overflow. And I think that's one of the main yeah. lessons, you know, I know we get all teachy here, but for anybody joining us on this way of wonder, again, we plan to have about 35,000 episodes, God willing. <laughs> um, all we want to do is, is all of us get our hearts formed in, in the one thing necessary, right? S seek the face of the Lord. It's this whole like knock and the door shall be opened. So looking, seeing, being able to waste time because it's going to fill you up. So if you're a person tuning in and following Father Patrick and I on this journey um, and you're like, you know what? I wish I had time for that. Well, make time. Kill time. You know, if you're working yeah. in an office with like blinking fluorescent lights and the coffee stinks and you're in a cubicle, uh, that ain't human. And that's going to suck life out of you. OK, you, you're going to provide for your family and you have a job. Great. But counter it with real human flourishing and that's what experiences like this do they fill you up and then you give from the overflow it's essential right we talked about this last week beauty is essential it's not like ah, if i have time for it it's essential. yeah yeah i i just think the human person is like one of those uh i don't know if i mentioned this last time but you know you go to home depot and you buy a plant and there's, there's like a tag that comes with the – did I talk about this last time? No, no. I don't, no. I don't remember. You, you, you buy a plant at Home Depot. It comes with that little tag that tells you, okay, you got to water it this much. It needs this much sunlight, this kind of soil, you know, blah, blah, blah. It tells you like the conditions under which this thing will flourish, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you are free to ignore that. You know, but you're not free of the consequences of that. You know, like if I say, no, I think this plant's going to do great in the dark it's going to die. Right. True. Like one of the conditions that, that is one of those essential ingredients for human flourishing is God's created beauty, like exposure mm -hmm. to that created beauty yes. in the same way that like that every plant needs sunlight. Mm -hmm. Every human heart needs beauty needs needs that pause needs that rest you know that's why i think there's there's something about you know when you mentioned you know the the inhuman um environment of the fluorescent light office and yeah. Yeah. um the constant noise and the concrete jungle and and i i find that like so it's a very interesting thing. My first assignment, I was much more in the heart of the city, surrounded by sirens and trucks and concrete and glass and stone and steel and mm -hmm. Isengard. I was an Isengard <laughs> in some ways, right? <laughs> right the right. things, the things that man has made, 
Um, and it's just easy to kind of lose your, lose your way. It's easy to lose track of reality. It's easy to lose track of your heart. You don't breathe as easily, I don't think. And then I, I come out to this, the second assignment. I'm out here in the country, right? Like I drive past fields and you can smell cows, you know? Oh um, and it's like, you can see stars, you know, you're, you're, and it's just not saying that you have to move out of your cities, but I'm just saying that we need this. Like the human soul Absolutely. needs this. Um, it's not a, it's not a luxury. It's, it's something so essential to our flourishing. Yeah, this is why, you know, this is why the Lord created the world as the first book for us to read. This is why he put us in a garden. I mean, it sounds trite. People yeah. may have heard that before. Like, oh, yeah, the Garden of Eden. Pause. Think about that for a second. He didn't put us in a concrete bunker. He didn't put us in a strip mall. You know, He didn't even put us in a nice log cabin with a fireplace. That would have been cool. He put us yeah. like, under the stars in the canopy of trees in a garden and think here we are in 2022. We are so far removed from that. I mean, even now as we're talking, I feel yeah. like we're, um, we're sort of like missionaries, like screaming into the void through YouTube. Hey everybody, you know, we're surrounded by screens right Go now. Outside. And like, yeah. <laughs> we have contraptions and stuff. It's like, we've descended back into the cave to tell everybody what you're looking at there on the walls is just flickering shadows. I've seen the sun. I've seen the sun. I've but seen we the stars. To, but we have to do yeah. that. So, you know, I think each week as we as we do this and uh, we share from our hearts what's kind of rocking our world, we should kind of give the homework to ourselves and everybody listening and viewing. Get outside. Make some time. Figure it out. Figure out a space, a place that is just life-giving uh, and slows you down. I guarantee anybody who's listening... Um, if, if you, if the first couple of images that father Patrick's sharing and he's going to one more up his sleeve, uh, you're kind of like, yeah, I, I've seen that before. I have a wallpaper on my, my MacBook pro that looks just like that. S not really immerse yourself in it and waste a good 15 minutes, half hour or more without your phone and see what happens to your mind, which is going to be static and, you know, flipping through radio stations in your brain for a while. Watch what happens to your breathing. Watch what happens to your senses. You're going to find yourself slowing down and appreciating more, and it's going to change the quality of your day. Gets a money-back guarantee right there, a guarantee that's going to happen. Okay, so when, when people click off of our episodes each week, that's the homework. Like, okay, somehow today I have to waste time with beauty. And then, like, keep a journal. Okay, what did this just do to me? How is this affecting my life? Because if, if you do that, right, the more that you get in the practice of that, it, it will posture your heart hmm. properly as a, as a creature, right? Like it puts your heart into the posture of receptivity or um, expectant receptivity, I should say. Like I'm expecting yeah. the Father to like <laughs> pour something beautiful into me, right? Hmm. Like that, that I think is one of the most essential things about this way of beauty, that it's it's – it puts our heart into this place of openness, which, um, I mean, again, like, what does Jesus say? Like, look at the wildflowers. Um, <laughs> what do they do? They gently open before the gift of the sun that pours down upon them. What does the soil do? It opens to receive the rain. What does the crop do? It opens to receive. There's, there's no, there's no life or growth without this posture of openness. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we live in a world where, where everybody is just like, like right here, like mm. all the time on their device. Mm. And, you know, I love that. I love that line that the Lord says to um, Abram. He says, go outside of your tent. And he says, look up. Yeah. Just that line, look up. Um, like, I think that's <laughs> like the line to like modern man. I know. Like we're right here. <laughs> it's like, no, no, look up. You're like, whoa. Who put these trees here? And this, <laughs> and right. like you'll start all of a sudden like start realizing you know that that every blade of grass is a gift, every leaf is a gift, and mm -hmm. you start thinking how many blades of grass are there? How many leaves are? There? Oh <laughs> you start gosh. like going down that road, and it's just crazy. But but I want to draw our attention to one more image. Sure, and this is another image that you took. Oh my god! Right here, the dew drops, the golden diamonds, the diamondy golden gems. Look at that. 
That's Kirkwood. That's the same spot. That's my way of yeah. wearing. Yeah. Yeah. That's like a necklace. That's like a shimmering necklace the Lord just threw on that blade of grass there. Okay, so pause right there. Back uh, to Fulton Sheen. To the materialist, a mountain is just a mountain. Yes. A dewdrop is just a drew dewdrop. But what did you just say? <laughs> like, look at those golden shimmery <laughs> pearls of glory and beauty and nectar and honey and poetry came spewing out of my face. Oh, that's yeah, a play, that was, that's a line. Something. That's a line from Plato. Um, at the touch of love, everyone becomes a poet. Right. Mm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, was it Saint John Henry Newman? We are bid to color all things uh, with the, with hues of faith or something like to see, to see this, to see sacramentality. Look at that. I, you know, you know this, Father Patrick, because you're you're my uh, yeah. brother from another mother. But dewdrops destroy me when I see dewdrops because there's something like there's something it's reflective literally like the sky whatever the sun the moon it's reflective it's translucent and it's minuscule it's a microcosm and it just invites me in did you ever see the uh, paintings of Georgia O'Keeffe she's sort of a yeah she's from the southwest all of her paintings are like macro, like super zoomed in. You know, it's the organs of a flower. It's just, it's like all in your face. There's something yeah. about this that uh, when I would take this walk in the mornings um, at Kirkwood, I would just, I would just get down like a little hobbit, get down on my knees, get down, crouch and just like, look, it's funny. I remember yeah. uh, when I would do this, Rebecca would say, you know, are you exercising? I say, I'm, I'm walking. She goes, yeah, but you stop every three feet though. <laughs> yeah, I'm exercising my heart in a whole different way. But yeah, yeah. this is a this is a this is a beauty, and I love, I love that. Um, like the background is just sort of this haze, you know. You can see the sun, you can see that cloud bank, that glorious cloud bank, but uh, you're kind of in that foreground of detail and precision and miracle. I mean, wow! And then when you lift up, you just it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Something so amazing. Yeah. I, I love the dance between the microcosm and the macrocosm, you know, like the particular and then the, like the universal, the big picture. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, uh, I just want to keep listening to you go, man. That was, <laughs> that was, that was uh, crazy. I, just, yeah. I just think, so part of the reason why I chose this picture mm -hmm. is because it's a blade of grass with dew drops on it. Right. It's not that's like it. this, Matt, right it's not like the vistas of the field right the first two pictures mm. the the scene that stopped me in my tracks the the path that you walked along um it's right. it is the interplay between the big and the small it's the 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 look notice come close come down here right that's mm. where i see like jesus's childlike invitation you know he becomes the little one the small one yeah. um he hides himself in He's just a tiny crumb offered on the altar of the world. He's just this nothing, right? Like he becomes so small and I, I like he hides his beauty. Like God hides his beauty in, in not just big sunsets and sunrises, but in yeah. these tiniest of yes. little spaces. I mean, every single morning people get up, they get dressed, they go to work and they walk past their lawns. They walk past shrubbery on the way to the office mm -hmm. and they're and they're missing this all day long and the only reason why we're noticing this right now is because you noticed it and zoomed in and took a picture of your cat with your camera right um but like the what what is it's gerard manley hopkins the world is charged with the grandeur of god the glory god. of god mm. yeah like it is every part supercharged of yeah i uh um... every single part uh, you know, what I love about this is, you know, granted, this is out in Chester County, Pennsylvania. It's farmland. There's a horse farm up to the left. Um, also to the right, it's a beautiful horse farm. But we might have people saying, like, you know, well, I live in Center City, D Detroit or Chicago or Philadelphia. You know, well, guess what? You know, if do you have a plant hanging off, you know, your your back veranda or something? Do you, anything like it's there. It's the, it's the microcosm. And it's available. Do you have life in your house or your apartment? You know, my father, uh, who lives up in Maine, he lives in a little apartment, but he's in the beauty of Maine. But his apartment is, he's got like 25 different house plants. He's got life everywhere, my dad. That's so awesome. you can you can create a lush garden. You can create this space. I mean, people love gardening. Why? Because they're getting into it. 
it's organic, it's, it's vibrant. It's literally gifting you with oxygen. It's giving back as you're giving to it carbon monoxide. Like there's this dance even going on there with, uh, with the created world. I just, this is funny, uh, as we're looking at this blade of grass, I'm thinking of Walt Whitman, Leaves of Grass, the great American poet. Yeah. But yesterday I was listening to Modest Yahoo. Do you know Modest Yahoo, Father Pat? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he's, he's a Jewish rapper. Love it. Uh, he used to have a massive beard, but he did shave the beard. He's got a song called I thought, Cross. I think, he left the, I think he left the orthodoxy behind. Yeah, I think he has. I could be wrong. Yeah. God bless him. He's on a path. May yeah. he uh, circle back. But um, he had a song years ago called Crossroads. I don't know if you know Crossroads. There's a there's an awesome acoustic version of Crossroads on YouTube that I encourage everybody. He's sitting on the beach with a guy playing a guitar. Uh, and there's a line in Crossroads by Madis Yahoo where he says, I see the most high in cracks you walk by. Oh, yeah. And he just drops that yeah. little verse in there. And what's he saying? Well, you know, maybe somebody's going to work after this or on their way home later and they're going to walk down a sidewalk. And life finds a way. Like life breaks out everywhere in unexpected places. And I think what we're trying to do here is just like train yourself to see. Don't be in a rush. Don't stare at your phone. Um, I had a sinking moment this morning. I'm driving to work. And as I'm leaving our, our little town, I see all the school kids coming out. Most of them are walking along the sidewalk on a beautiful autumn morning, blue sky, gorgeous, staring at their yep, phones. I know what you're going to say. Yep. You know, sixth grade kids, seventh grade kids. When I was a kid, I mean, we, we had a two-mile hike or bike to school, and I loved every part of it. I had my favorite spot where the big sycamore is or that crazy dog that barks and chases along the fence every time. Or here's the cool part where you jump over this stream. I feel like kids, you know, you're, you're staring and then you get there and then it's time to go to work. This is what we're talking yeah. about. Like you got to be intentional about this way of wonder. You've got to kill time, sacrifice it, which means to make holy. And what, just watch what happens. Trust us. Father Patrick and I, we're trying to trust us here. If you kill time, make time for beauty, it will reward you a hundredfold. Your, your literal mental clarity, your reflective power, your heart rate, your breathing, you will feel a bodily change and a spiritual change. And I think the fruits of it are going to just be peace, joy, right? Gratitude, trust. Yeah. The word I'm thinking of right now is the word anesthetize. Oh, yeah. Right. Open that one up. Which, oh. yeah, the, yeah, that's. That's all I can think about when you're talking about those kids walking home from school on their phones. Mm. I mean, that's that's all of us these days. The word yes. anesthetize, the etymology there is numb to beauty. Numb scary. to beauty. That is so scary. Yeah. Which is really, that's a, I mean, that's a wild thing, you know. Um, but perhaps like the, a challenge or just a thing to think about or reflect on is, is, is the practically speaking, what are the things, what are the forces – the things I allow in my life that are my strongest anesthetics. What what is trying, or what it, what it has the strongest grip on me in terms of numbing me to beauty? I bet ninety nine percent of us it's our phones. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But just to just to take an honest assessment of that, because like we are walking past not just beautiful sunrises and sunsets and fields, but beautiful honey golden drops of glory pearl necklaces dew drops <laughs> what he just said like he's just he, he's just put he's just put so much of it everywhere you know we're just walking right past it yeah so i, I don't want we don't want to be anesthetized what's yeah, the opposite of anesthetized that's a great question beautified gobsmacked by the holy spirit i'm not sensitized. sure sensitized sensitized yeah, maybe yeah anesthetized yeah Nest anesthetized we're going to make up a new word ladies and gentlemen yeah. All right. So this this leads into the the axio part, um, which we've been been making abundantly clear. Right. Your homework this week. Do it. Do it. This is a great season to do it. To just pause, and just say like my my um, the fruitfulness of my life, uh, of my own heart, is is more important than the productivity that I'm called to do or that I think I should do. Like le leave that. And try to try a different way of existing 
and see what happens. I guarantee it's gonna it's gonna nourish the, the it's gonna make you more productive. Have you discovered that, Father Patrick? Like you don't you oh, don't, yeah. you don't regret when you spend time with beauty. You're not like, oh man, I just blew a hole. <laughs> it actually fills your day in a different way. You feel more I wouldn't say productive as much as fruitful. You've had a fruitful day. Yeah. Yeah. We're not saying you have to go sit in a field for an hour before work, nope. but like nope. Just find some time to like listen to some beautiful music, pause in a beautiful field, look mm -hmm. at some flowers, like like it's it's so important. Um I f as far as this axio, I I find myself sometimes I try to start my day with a deep breath outside first. You know, just kind of an awareness and awakening to what the day's gift is as far as weather and just thanking God for that. And I always try to get into that posture of like, okay, I'm beloved by God. But I still I still have that itch to sometimes like grab the phone and open up the gospel of the day. But it, as you know, it's Pandora's box. It can get really ugly. So <laughs> I'm transitioning to trying to do a rosary first that gets me into a more contemplative, meditative and vocal kind of way of praying where I'm, I'm kind of, I can still be very aware of my surroundings as I go through my rosary. And another axio kind of thing to get me acclimated to wonder, uh, as you just mentioned it, the music. This morning I had um, Faure's, uh, Faure's Requiem. Do you know Faure's Requiem? I played the Sanctus. I know, I know it's, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my gosh. So like, we want to provide some of these little gems too as we go along. We want to build up this treasure chest, like maybe in the end notes of the uh, or show notes of each episode, like the things we referenced, or we'll build something where we share things. Maybe like, oh, I never heard that, or I never saw that, or um, we we enter into this great conversation, as they say, that's been going on for centuries, of the kinds of things that you could waste time with. Uh, some classical composers maybe classical music is something maybe viewers have never dabbled in uh i yeah. have a bit father patrick i think you have too not just say like that's exclusive we could open up to anything i just quoted a jewish rapper named modest yahoo we could share all these things and say like taste and see and then let us know what you think and what it does to you yeah awesome it's great um Thanks for uh, zapping me with two of my own photographs and bringing me back to my... Um... I thought she'd like that. <laughs> I did. And that shot yeah. of uh, of your Shire, it's funny. I remember when yeah. you, you, you shared that with me and you shared when you got the assignment in the beginning, you said that you're, uh, you feel like you're in the Shire out in Wadsworth. Yeah. And I thought that was... So it cool. is. Yeah. You, you said yeah, too it's so that... awesome. Uh, you said there's a lot of Shire hatred out there in our culture today. And I thought that was spot on. Yes. I've actually I've actually shared that in teaching in the last few months because I I feel it. I feel like if we're gonna be intentional, gang, if we're gonna be serious about this mm -hmm. way of wonder, uh, this isn't frivolous. This isn't like you know, uh, no. not, not an un, un necessity. <laughs> this is in incredibly important. But if we're gonna do it, we're gonna realize there's shire hatred. People are gonna say like, "What are you doing, wasting your time on that?" Or uh, yeah, it's yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, who knows the importance of beauty are the tyrants. This was hmm. the first, first group of people that they always hmm. take in captivity or decapitate or arrest wow. the artists and That's the poets. True. Look That's at history. Uh-huh. Every time. They know. Right. So you Every know what time. this is? This is, we're forming the resistance. Okay, we need one of those. Les like, resistance. Hunger, we need one of those Hunger Game signs. Like, wah, wah, whatever it is, we're gonna come up with a sign. It's gonna be wow right. for Way of Wonder. This is our sign. <laughs> wah, wah. I can't All do right. that with my right hand though. I've got like a genetic defect with my hand or something. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, won't go left. <laughs> well, oh my goodness. So, thank you for tuning in, everybody. Joining Father Patrick and I as we saunter through the Way of Wonder. Um, We'll try to put in some of the, the little gems that we've talked about in the show notes. Or I was even thinking about opening up an Instagram page called Way of Wonder. And then we can actually like offload and put some of the stuff we look at there too. I'm just literally sharing this mm -hmm. with you on the spot, Father Patrick. Uh, we, well, I like it. We want to, honestly, we are trying to form the resistance. Father Patrick just said it. The Shire hatred that's out there. Uh, dictatorships, tyrannical governments, they always attack the academics, the philosophers, the poets, the artists. John Paul the Great was in an underground theater. He knew that the beautiful form of um, theater 
could capture and hold culture. And it was something he knew was also under attack. So this is what we're doing, gang. We're forming the resistance. All right, Father Patrick, um, thank you for that. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. You're Next welcome. week, uh, it's my turn. So uh, I got something cooking for you. And I can't wait to show you. Can't wait. Uh, if you if you're watching this video and enjoying these this uh, second of uh, of our episode so far, and you know just get the conversation going because we you know the comment section too is something that Father Patrick and I will visit and respond yeah. to, and uh, we're super excited to hear what has fed your spirit and the things you've seen. To go back to that Bishop Fulton Sheen quote, the things that you've seen and seen through. All right, so let's close with a prayer. Until next week, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of wonder, Amen. we praise you, and we thank you for giving us eyes to see, and ears to hear, and hands to touch. There's so much beauty in the world, and we pray, Lord, that you would uh, wake us up from this anesthesia that has numbed us, and perhaps this week give us a chance to take that holy pause and choose uh, the one thing necessary, to be still and know that you are God. So we want to open our eyes, Lord, and give you permission to speak. Lord, your servants are listening. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the Father, amen. The Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, Father Patrick. God bless. See you next week. Thanks, Bill. We'll see you next week.